In this video, I'm going to be repairing this late 2011 13-inch Apple MacBook Pro. Now, I actually got this quite some time ago, actually, as a trade for, with someone. And, um, yeah, it appears to be working perfectly fine. However, this machine does have quite a major issue uh, that makes it pretty much unusable in daily, daily use. Um, so, as you can see, it's plugged in right now. The uh, MagSafe is plugged in and it's charging the battery. Uh, it seems to be running perfectly fine, perfectly smooth. It seems to be usable. However, as soon as I unplug the charger, you'll see what the issue is. Let's go ahead and unplug it here. And uh, you can see the machine's still running. That's perfectly normal. But when I start moving the mouse, you're going to start to notice something. It seems to be a little bit laggy. I mean, it might not show up on the video. But as soon as I start to drag a window around, then things start to look kind of weird here. Let's go into Launchpad here. See, that was quite laggy. Opening the folder completely just jittery. Let's minimize this window. You can see the uh, stutter there. So yeah, as you can see, this machine is practically unusable when it is running off battery. So to show you again, I'll go ahead and plug it in again. Alright, and now as you can see it is plugged in, and when we do those same actions, you can see the launchpad folder is nice and smooth. Uh, we can go ahead and open about this Mac again, uh, drag the window around, it's perfectly smooth, uh, minimize it, maximize it, perfectly smooth, and then when you unplug it, extremely laggy and unusable. So. In this video, I'm going to be repairing this problem, and this is actually a very common problem uh, that results uh, from water damage, and this board was water damaged. Um, actually, the guy I got it from bought this machine as a fully working machine off Craigslist. I'm not exactly sure how much he paid for it, but uh, he pretty much got scammed, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure he paid quite a bit for it, uh, and this was pretty much a scam in this uh, for this person, so that's quite unfortunate, but I am going to be repairing it in this video, so... Um, yeah, we will go ahead and see what the issue is. I, like I said, have an idea of what it is, but we will uh, take a look at the schematic and I'll explain why uh, this particular problem occurs. And uh, of course, we're gonna go over the process of repairing it. So before I get started, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the motherboard from this machine, uh, get the schematic open, and uh, then we'll go ahead and proceed with the repair. So I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see here, I've gone ahead and removed the logic board from the machine. And uh, basically, uh, I remember from when I initially got this machine, uh, the water damage was concentrated into one area. And that area uh, was right around here where the SMC is, but uh, luckily the SMC is still good since the machine powers on. Um, but the components that are causing the issue are located right there. And uh, you can see that they are quite corroded looking. So I believe, uh, yeah, these are two resistors right here. And then there's this IC. Now this IC uh, is what's causing the problem. So um, let me go ahead and show you what that actually is in the schematic here. Um, that is the, it is Q5300 right there, and it is part of the PBUS voltage sense enable and filter circuitry. Um, so basically what this is, is essentially a sensor, and uh, it I'm not exactly sure how this works, but I believe it gets a uh, a input from uh, well, it gets power from PP bus G3 hot, and uh, then it gets this uh, sense or outputs this sense rail SMC P bus V sense, and when that rail is not present, which it isn't, uh, when the uh, battery is unplugged or when the uh, power is unplugged and it's running off battery, uh, because this IC is bad. Um, the uh, SMC will just clock down the CPU and that's exactly why it's being so slow in the system. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to get this component and those two resistors which I believe are these two. We can actually check that. Um, it's these two resistors that are bad. It's R30 or R5301 and R5302. So that is this resistor which is 100k 100k ohm and then this other 100k ohm resistor right here so we're going to be replacing all, all three of those components from other boards now i'm not sure how the condition of these traces are but uh if i solder it on or if i take the the ic off and some of the pads are gone uh, i'm going to have to do a little bit of work to 
uh, jump it, but that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on a tripod, and we'll go ahead and begin by removing this IC. So, I will be right back. Alright, so um, we're now ready to begin removing the chip. Um, as you can see, I have already applied some flux here. Um, so now I'm just going to get my hot air gun, and we're going to begin heating it up and remove it. So let me get it ready here with my tweezers, and um, we'll go ahead and heat it up. I'll probably just go ahead and remove all three of those components, uh, the chip and both of those resistors. Because, uh, like I said, we are just going to go ahead and replace all of them since they all look kind of bad. Alright, and the IC came off, and it does look like it pulled some pads up. Or those pads were already corroded so um, yeah so now that I've got that off let me go ahead and uh, remove these two resistors as well and that pulled a pad too Alright, so as you can see, I got all those uh, components off the board, um, but it did pull quite a few pads off, so I have to do a little bit of work getting those uh, fixed, but let me go ahead and clean that up a little bit with some solder, and hopefully I can rejuvenate some of the pads, so add some flux to it, of course, um, and then we're going to add some leaded solder here. So it looks like three pads are missing from uh, from the uh, IC area here, and then one of the resistors pads are missing. The other, uh, these two for that the top resistor, and the bottom one for the bottom resistor is there. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I'll be able to jump these. It's not going to be very easy considering how small this chip is. Uh, but I will definitely try my best. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get another board up here uh, to pull that component off of. And uh, of course that can be pretty much any board uh, that has the same circuitry. So I'm going to be using a mid-2012 board here that has that IC on it. So we got one right here, and it's up in this corner. Hopefully this is good. It doesn't look that good, but we'll go ahead and try it anyway. Alright, so now that I've gotten the component off of another board, um, I'm going to go ahead and solder it on to this board. Um, so you can see the components right here, I just put it in place. Um, but like I said, not all the pads are there, so um, I'm going to have to 
um, jump some of them to their respective points uh, with some wires once I get it soldered in. So uh, hopefully it won't be too hard. This is a quite a small component, so it might be a bit difficult, uh, but I guess we'll see what happens. Alrighty, so I have just finished reworking the board uh, in this area and getting all the traces connected to their proper points. And let me just say that this was probably one of the most difficult soldering jobs I think I've ever done. Because as you can see, that component is extremely small. It's right in this area. Let me turn on the light here so you can kind of see. So yeah, there it is. Um, and you might be able to make out uh, those little bits of jumper wire I had to use to connect the missing pads to their respective points on the board. Now, those pieces of jumper wire, I actually had to, uh, I didn't have any actual wire that was that thin. So what I ended up doing was taking little strands off of the end of a piece of solder wick and uh, soldering them in place. So you can imagine how hard that was. And to give you a little bit of a comparison here, uh, this is the tip of my soldering iron that I use um, in comparison with the chip. So as you can see, um, it is my soldering iron is off right now, so it's not going to heat and melt anything. But um, you can see that the tip of my soldering iron is about pretty much as big as the chip, the angle. Or it's probably a little bit bigger than the chip. So I had to basically get right up in there with the point of it and uh, solder those tiny, tiny wires onto the pins. So um, yeah, that was definitely quite a challenging job, but I did get it done. And uh, in a minute here, I'll go ahead and hook this machine up to the, to the uh, chassis and the rest of the components, and we'll give it a test. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it to the machine. And uh, from there, we will boot it up and see if this actually works. So I will be right back. All right, so as you can see, I have gotten the logic board reinstalled to the chassis and have booted the machine up. And uh, it is indeed running off battery right now. So you can see uh, that my MagSafe connector is not plugged into the machine and uh, it indicates uh, it is running off battery right there. And check it out, it is now fully working. The animations are perfectly smooth, just like they're supposed to be. As you can see, um, we can go ahead into about this Mac um, and minimize that and look at that that is also perfectly smooth now on the battery um, launch pad animations as I just showed you before perfectly smooth folder opening smooth um, and of course we can plug it in and it will switch over to the power supply and it will charge the battery uh, so you can see there the screen this MagSafe connector is a little weird there we go so you can see that the MagSafe is now plugged in and it will start charging the battery. So as you can see there, it turned orange. Um, it is charging now and of course the uh, animations and all is perfectly fine while plugged in as well. So I can unplug it and it's still perfectly smooth just like it's supposed to be. So that has been the repair of this late 2011 13 inch MacBook Pro that runs or used to run slow off the battery. So um, hope you enjoyed this video.